Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems. Bamboo Labs is undoubtedly leading the charge in bringing 3D printing to the masses. Their X1 Carbon and P1S machines have made 3D printing accessible to average consumers who want to print cool things without needing in-depth technical knowledge of the machine. Adding to their lineup, Bamboo Labs launched the A1 about five months ago to overwhelmingly positive reviews. The A1 was praised by many users and reviewers as the best bed slinger 3D printer on the market. Unfortunately, a serious problem with the A1 was soon discovered. In some instances, the cable delivering mains power to the bed heater could become damaged, overheat, and possibly be a fire hazard. While there were no instances of the A1 actually catching fire, and this issue was only reported at about one-tenth of one percent of A1 sold, Bamboo Labs quickly issued a full recall on the A1 and informed customers to stop using them. Now, just a few months later, we have a new and improved Bamboo Labs A1 featuring probably the most over-engineered heat bed cable I've ever seen. I've been using and abusing the new A1 for a couple of weeks now. Did Bamboo Labs truly fix the problem? And can the A1 reclaim its title as the best bed slinger? Let's find out. The agenda for today, we'll quickly cover what exactly the problem with the original bed heater cable was, we'll see how or if Bamboo Labs fixed the problem, we'll quickly look at what if any other improvements or updates have been made to the A1, and for anyone who may still have the original fire hazard A1, stay tuned and I'll explain what your options are. So what the hell happened? Well, here's the Cliff Notes version. The bed heater cable got kinked right where the cable meets the lower bed assembly, either during packaging and shipping or by the user during setup. This caused a weak spot in the cable that got worse as the printer operated, bending the cable back and forth over and over again. Eventually, the insulation on the cable wore down and the copper wires inside touched each other. This heated things up, melting the insulation even more until the machine tripped a breaker or blew a fuse. The big issue here is that there are 110 to 240 volts of AC power running through that cable because Bamboo Labs uses mains power to heat the print bed. This is normal for all Bamboo Labs printers. Mains power heating is much faster and more consistent. It's also more efficient than converting AC to DC power first to heat the bed. But as we've seen, it can be more dangerous if not done properly. So what did Bamboo do to fix this problem? Well, they completely over-engineered the heat bed cable in a good way. They used softer, more flexible copper with an optimized winding interval. They added thicker, less brittle insulation and reinforced it with Kevlar. They also included more strain relief, a longer cable, and wrapped the entire thing in nylon mesh to provide more consistent movement and even more strain relief. To help eliminate user error, they included a bumper. If you don't follow the very clear instructions to not lay the full weight of the printer on the bed cable, the bumper will prevent damage to the cable. It also ensures you can't push the printer all the way up against the wall. So does this fix work? Is the new AA1 gonna catch fire? To put it to the test, I did everything you're not supposed to do. I smashed the full weight of the machine on the bed cable while assembling the printer. I pushed the printer all the way up against the wall and let the bed slam the cable into the wall repeatedly. After a couple of hundred hours of this, the cable is no worse for wear. No signs of kinking or weakening, no shorting or heat buildup. It's survived completely intact. Now, while I did that all for science, you should definitely not. You should follow Bamboo's revised and very clear instructions to avoid damaging the cable. Don't lay the full weight of the printer on the cable and don't position the printer in a way that puts undue stress on the cable. Pushing any bed slinger up against the wall is a bad idea, and even with the bumper on the new A1, you can still crush the mains power cable and the AMS cable. While my testing was limited to just a couple of weeks and therefore isn't definitive, I don't think the cable will have the same problem that a very small number of the previous version did. So with the electrical fire risk eliminated, has the Bamboo Labs A1 retaken its place as the best bed slinger on the market? 
Well, that's debatable. First, I think of Bamboo Labs as the apple of the 3D printer space. Their machines and the entire Bamboo ecosystem are geared towards the user experience, and they just work. The A1 nails that. It just works. Other than the initial assembly, which is super simple even for non-technically inclined users, I didn't have to do anything else to the machine physically. There's no need to adjust rollers or tension belts. There's no manual levering process. And if you're using the AMS Lite, filament changes are as easy as a few clicks on the touchscreen. I caught another creator's review of the A1 when it was first released, and he described Bamboo Labs printers as appliances. That's a great analogy. Of course, there are both software and hardware restrictions with the Bamboo Labs appliance-like model. Users might find themselves constrained by proprietary software that lacks a flexibility of open source alternatives. This can limit customization and the ability to tweak settings to better suit specific needs. A closed ecosystem can also mean that users can only use specific approved hardware and accessories this can be restrictive for those who prefer to experiment with different components or third-party products. Ultimately, this printer is designed and built for the average consumer who just wants to 3D print things without needing to know much about how the printer works. It's not necessarily for the 3D hobbyist who's into the hobby for both the printing and tinkering with the machine hardware and software. Now, while I definitely fall into the tinkerer category, I can certainly appreciate the simplicity of the A1, even though it's a pretty complex machine, I don't need to know how any of the stuff under the hood works to be able to operate and produce great prints. And it does produce outstanding prints, but this is not a full review of the A1. Other than the new bed cable and a few new firmware features, this is the exact 3D printer Bamboo Labs released back in December. and has been thoroughly reviewed. And from what I learned over the past couple weeks is I pretty much agree with the few reviews I've seen. The A1 is very user-friendly and a simple printer to use. It produces great prints and it does it quickly at up to 500 millimeters per second. And it's relatively affordable for the features you get. On the downside, the light in the camera basically worthless, and the dependency on cloud connectivity with the inability to connect directly to the machine through a local network can be frustrating at times. My main goal for this video was to test the new bed cable, so I needed the printer to operate for a long time under conditions that would really stress that. Secondarily, I wanted to test the AMS light, the one's capability to handle multiple filaments. So I gathered a variety of filament brands I had on hand, including the case of filaments Bamboo sent over with the printer. Then I jumped into the Bamboo Studio model catalog and picked a few models that would work with the materials I had available. The three models I chose were these adorable baby dragons, a Christmas teddy bear, and this Pikachu. Each of these prints took 15 to 20 hours with hundreds of filament changes. With each change, the bed slid all the way back to the rear position, pinning the cable against the wall for a minute or more. Outside of a couple of user errors, like loading spools with inner diameters larger than the clearly indicated compatible size, the prints finished perfectly. Mixing and matching different filaments wasn't a problem for the A1. Most importantly, from these prints and then a week and a half of just running the noise cancellation calibration over and over and over again, the cable stood up to the abuse. Again, this was for science testing a worst case scenario. You definitely shouldn't let your bed cable smash into a wall while printing. Now, let's talk about the AMS units popping up with Bamboo and other printers. While they're really cool and allow you to print creative models, I personally don't like them because they're just too wasteful. For example, these adorable baby dragons only use 38 grams of filament, but it produced a whopping 264 grams of waste. That 
is a horrible ratio. There are ways to reduce this waste. You can reduce the size of your wipe tower, wipe into the infill and supports, and reduce the purge ratio. I did all of these for all of these prints. I even used the Bamboo Studio paint function to paint over the black nose and eyes of the teddy bear and the whites of Pikachu's eyes, which I just painted those in later to eliminate an entire color from the prints and therefore hundreds of filament changes. However, you still end up with a lot of waste. And while you can recycle this stuff back into filament, it's not a simple process and it's not a realistic option for the demographic this machine targets. Personally, I use 3D printers for practical components and engineering products, but I get it. <laughs> That's boring. This is cool. That's why I was impressed to find this wireless mouse kit in the box with the A1. I found the model on the catalog and I printed the mouse body, which came out beautifully in this galaxy purple. And now I get to build a wireless mouse. It's funny because out of everything, this little kit had me the most excited. While the main customer of this printer is probably more interested in models like these, this kit might introduce them to really cool yet practical things you could do with a 3D printer. In fact, I discovered Bamboo has a bunch of these kits for different projects and I'm thinking of getting all of them. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video where I print and build all the Bamboo Maker projects. Anyway, let's move on to the main point I wanna make about the A1 and Bamboo Labs. Companies, regardless of size or prestige, inevitably make mistakes and put out flawed products. It's regrettable, but it happens. While the severity of a problem can break a company and a legitimate fire hazard is pretty severe, how the company responds to these problems says a lot and is often more important than the actual problem. Overall, I think Bamboo Labs response was outstanding. They responded quickly, informing customers of the potential problem with the kinked cables and offered a fix. As more facts were collected and the potential severity was discovered, they issued a total product recall and offered customers two options. Return the unit for a full refund and an $80 credit or receive a revised heat bed replacement and a $120 credit. Now, it did take Bamboo Labs some time to ramp up their aftermarket support team to deal with the influx of a total product recall, but within about a month, customers were seeing quick responses. To me, this response ranks right up there with Fractal Design's response to the fire hazard discovered on the fan hub of their torrent PC cases. In fact, Bamboo Labs seemingly followed Fractal's playbook verbatim with the addition of a good sized monetary credit for affected customers. For me, how Bamboo Labs handled the adversity with both a quick and effective fix and adequate customer support was impressive. They didn't blame their customer shirk responsibility or try to weasel out of compensating customers with some legal trickery like we've seen from other companies in the past. So for customers that may still have the original recalled A1, I put a link to the Bamboo Labs recall registration in the description below. And for those deciding whether or not to pick up the new and improved A1, I can say with a fairly high, but not legally binding level of confidence that if used properly, it's not gonna burn your house down. All right, guys, that wraps up my review of the new and improved Bamboo Labs A1 3D printer. It's clear that Bamboo Labs has put in the work to address the previous issues and delivers a reliable, user-friendly machine. If you find this review helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Elevated Systems for more tech reviews and 3D printing content. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay notified of my latest uploads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.